So this is our highlights layer that we've added here. Now it's probably just a little strong at the moment. Um, I'm just turning on and off the whole group there. It's a little bit strong, but rather than back it off with the opacity, which I could do, and actually that, that there is not a bad approximation of, of how uh, Jolene has it looking in her version of this image, but what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to be a little more selective than that. I'm going to add a, a layer mask, not to these individual layers, but to the group itself. So I'll close up the group and I'm going to click the, once again, the add layer mask icon with the group selected and you can add a layer mask to the group itself. So um, just like when you did the same with, uh, with a normal layer, um, we get a, a, a layer mask icon and I'm going to choose that and once again I'm going to go back to my graphics tablet because we're going to do a little bit of freehand drawing again and once again we're going to grab a brush uh, we're going to press the B key to get the brush and we're going to use black and white on our layer mask and remember white reveals black conceals so what we're going to do is we're going to start just letting a little more of this cloud start showing through just to make it a little bit more ambiguous. Is this underwater? Is this in the sky? That's one of the things that I love most about this image is the ambiguity of where it is and, and what's going on exactly. So um, once again with our soft edge brush and our pressure sensitive um, uh, opacity, um, I'm just going to start painting a little bit of black on the layer mask for this highlights just to start bringing some of the clouds back through. Um, I think we need just a bit more here. It's looking a little too underwatery here. And uh, a bigger brush here. Just try not to make the effect of what we're doing too hard-edged. We don't want it to be really visible that there's brush strokes here. We just want there to be information there and, and for us not really for, not for the viewer to be able to see the edges of of where we've been painting with this brush so big soft edge brush and we'll go and do a little bit of tidying up on the other layer mask in just a moment there we go and I'm just bringing back I just love the way the clouds sort of merge into the hair there this hair's gone beautifully red and uh, it just sort of merges into the clouds it's wonderful so um, we're going to just we've got some clouds coming back in here and if we've gone too far we can get the white brush back out and just bring back a little bit of the blue there we go Oh, we've done a little bit too much on the foot there. There we go, that's looking pretty good. So let's just go back to our Ang and Mandy layer and once again we're going to work on the layer mask that put the original um, two figures into the image. So just where there's, where there's too strong a, a halo I'm just going to see if I can back that off a little bit. Um, now I mentioned that the face is always an important point on this because it's such a bright spot in the image. So I'm going to zoom right in on the layer mask there, uh, on the uh, face there. Um, and once again, with my soft edge brush, painting very lightly now because these are, these changes are going to be very visible if I'm if I get this wrong. And just and when I'm painting over these edges here. Um, I'm not trying to run the edge of the brush along the line because this is a soft edge brush. I accept that I'm going to over overshoot a little, and if you look, I'm placing my brush sort of, uh, sort of two thirds into the thing that I'm sort of trying to mask against. So there is going to be a, a sort of a soft overlap along the edge of the line or along the edge of the dress here, along the edge of the chin, and the, maybe across the mouth a little bit. It's the only way to to really make these gradations between one layer mask between one layer and the other as smooth as possible is to accept that there's got to be a little bit of overlap and there's got to be a little bit of um, painting into the thing that you're trying to reveal. And now, if you look, it may not be visible on the on the video. Uh, just along there, I've I've gone just a little bit too dark. So, grabbing my uh, white uh, painting on the layer mask revealing the blue background again I'm just going to work that back in a little bit and there's also this curl down here that I I noticed I've 
maybe taken just a little bit too much off there. And we can paint, actually, one of the nice things about this is because in the original image, there's a lot of depth in this hair here. And I do love the way the hair sort of merges into the background. But, you know, we don't want to lose too much of the shape of it either. Um, and there's wonderful detail here, look. So let's just keep some of that in. Just use the... Just use the transparency just to sort of lighten it a little bit. There we go. That's looking pretty good. So it's all sort of floating and underwater and it sort of merges into the clouds. That's great. I love it. Right. So I think we're zeroing in on how we want those those two figures to look. There's maybe a little bit of work to be done on the on the feet there. Going back to the Angamandi layer, let's just um, tidy up those toes. Using a fairly small brush now, and once again, I remind you not to get too caught up in being zoomed in all the time. By all means, be careful and att pay attention to detail, but don't, don't, don't spend all your time zoomed in because you will spend forever on a tiny little corner of the image, and you'll zoom back out and realise that you've done so much without going back out that you, you've you managed to change the character of that one little bit of the image without ever really paying attention to how the rest of the image looked. And it's all about p consistency and the image looking like a consistent whole, not spending the time on that one little bit. You've really got to keep remembering that your edits are always done in the context of the overall image. So, there we go, just tidied up those toes a little bit and keep coming back out to the full image. Um, and of course, coming back out to the full image reminds me that we've still got um, way too many pixels around the edge that we don't need. So let's so let's deal with that. We're going to go to the cropping tool, and we're going to just drag out. And we're not going to go any further right than the edge of the uh, the Ang and Mandy image that we've placed, and no further down than the bottom of her legs. So we're going to select that out. And as always, when you've chosen the area you want, you press Enter on the keyboard, and that crops it down to the size we want. And now we've got one final thing left to do for this stage of the tutorial. We're going to, um, if we just look at the image, I'll, I'll try not to leap ahead there. I was about to start doing the work without telling you why I was doing it. Just looking at this image, we've got a dark area on the left-hand side. And this this top area here, you, you need to be sort of mentally block this out because we're going to do some stuff up there with reflections in the next step of this development. But um, if you look over here, this side of the image is generally darker um, than this side. And there's there's a real... It, it's balance-wise, it's not quite balanced at the moment, particularly with the face being so bright um, and, and so far, so close to this edge of the image. So what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of even that up and stop the eye sort of falling off to the right by adding, you guessed it, a vignette, or in this case, a gradient that is just on that right-hand side. So going to our layers palette, we're going to make a new bitmap layer, and we're going to call this... I'm going to call it vignette. I don't think Jolene did, but I'm going to call it a vignette because everybody knows I love my vignettes. And I'm going to go to the gradient tool, which is here on the uh, on the toolbar, or you can just press the G key. And when you get the uh, the gradient tool up uh, in the in the toolbar at the top here, you get the options to choose what gradient you would like. So if you click on the gradient, there are some pre-programmed pre gradients. We want the second one along, which goes from foreground color fully fully opaque to foreground color fully um, uh, transparent. So I'm going to choose that and press OK. And on our new layer, which our vignette layer, I'm going to click on the right-hand side and I'm going to draw a line to the left. And if you, once again, if you want to constrain that to diagonals and verticals, um, hold down the Shift key, and we want to go maybe about that far in. Now, obviously, that is way too strong. That's way too dark. So what we're going to do, I'm going to drag that so that you can see, and we're going to just back it off by dragging the opacity down. And we want it down to maybe there. And you know, I don't think I've gone quite far enough with that vignette, so I'm going to control A and delete and do the gradient again. So I'm going to go a little bit further this time. There we go, that's a bit better. And we're still at 58% opacity, so that's the effect that we're going for. Now, one final thing. Um, I don't like the fact that it's darkened down the face. The face is the focal point of this image. It needs to it needs to pull the eye because that really is what the whole image is about. So uh, once more, we're going to add a um, 
uh, a layer mask to this layer. So I'm going to click the layer mask button down at the bottom. It's going to add a layer mask to this gradient layer. And once again, we're going to grab the, uh, the graphics tablet and we're just going to paint in the detail. Oops. We're going to just paint in the detail on that layer mask. And I've managed to press a key there. Right, I've back to, back to where I was. Um, I'm going to zoom right in on the face. I'm going to grab my brush. And once again, you really want to work with as a bigger brush as you can get away with usually because it's going to give you nice soft transitions that don't jar too much. No, no sharp edges. I just want to paint back in. I'm painting black on the layer mask, which is obscuring the gradient. So I'm just painting back in the detail on their face there. And I'm just going to bring in the, the shape of that hair. There's a wonderful highlight along the top of the hair there. So I'm just going to make sure I've included all of that and just making sure none of this detail in the hair here is lost either. So there we go, that's, that's looking pretty good. So, let's just go and turn that um, layer mask on and off, make sure that it's giving us the effect we want. Remember to always check your work, turn these effects on and off, just see whether or not they are giving the effect that you want. And I think in this case, that's pretty good. Um, I might just... It's maybe just a little too strong in the hair there. So, I'll reveal the gradient a little bit more there. Uh, maybe not that much. There we go. Right, so I like the way the face is looking, and when you turn these things on and off, quite often it looks like it's too strong an edit. I, I really urge you to be brave. Um, if you if you think it's too strong, don't necessarily immediately back it all the way off. You don't back it off as far as you think, um, and then a few minutes later you'll look at it and go, actually, no, that was right. So it could, quite often it's all about sort of uh, subjective changes and you need to somehow back yourself off and get and be able to see it from an objective point of view rather than a subjective point of view and objectively it might look great but compared to what it looked like a moment ago it might be jarringly jarringly strong so it's a bit difficult to sort of train yourself to to be brave in that respect but uh, there we go this is um uh, the next sort of uh, stopping point in this image we've got the um, the two ladies now merge nicely into the clouds. Um, this is, you know, we're making no attempt here to to be 100% natural and 100% realistic here. This is this is uh, such a fantastical image. It's, um, you know, fantasy image. Um, we don't need to to concern ourselves too much with realism. What we're trying to do here is guide the eye and make the people see what we're looking for them to see. And in this case, we're trying to confuse them. Is it sky? Is it underwater? You know, where's this sense of movement coming from? Where's the light coming from? And I think that's where the uh, that's where the joy of this whole thing comes in. You can really let yourself be, be free and not worry too much about those edges and making sure that things are masked absolutely perfectly and making sure that um, you know all the colours are exactly right and all the um, the details detail is, is, you know, smooth and, and not grainy, uh, you know, just abandon those um, modern concerns with photography and, and really let yourself go with this image. It's one of the reasons I really love this image. So in the next step, we are going to um, complete this by doing the reflections in the top half of the image. Um, so that will be in the next one. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com. <laughs>